Oil's at $56. Uh, that's what we're talking about today in terms of uh, the commodities focus. My colleague Manisha is here to take us through exactly that. Manisha, morning. Morning, Prashant. Thank you so much for that. Well, yes, we've seen gains come back in case of the crude oil prices after that profit-taking yesterday on account of a couple of things. And these are, one, uh, uh, the U.S. rig count has continued to decline for a third straight week. That has been supportive. And the other is the uh, Saudi oil minister's statement saying that, as earlier thought, the meeting between OPEC and allies will now not be held in the month of April, but on 25th and 26th June. That is when they're meeting in Vienna. So that means until June, the out put cuts would stay on between OPEC and allies. So a couple of those things is what really has been supportive. Back around $66 for, uh, per barrel for Brent prices. Half a percent up is how we are trading onto that one. Joining us to talk further about that is Jonathan Barat, uh, joins us on a phone line. Jonathan, hi, morning, good to have you. What is your sense really about uh, what, you know, the OPEC cuts, even as uh, the U.S. president has been directing OPEC to take it easy, we only have seen uh, the OPEC and Russia actually continue to pledge higher, deeper cuts going forward. Uh, is that, that what's really moving the markets right now? Um, at least good morning. Look, I generally think that the oil market's in a pretty tight range has been for quite a few trading sessions. WTI ranging pretty much between 55 and 58, and uh, Brent between 64 and 68. I think one of the concerns we hold at the moment uh, is the uh, cuts that OPEC Plus have put in place might actually tip the market into a deficit. If that's the case, then prices should firm up. Contrary to that, obviously, we've got issues in China in terms of economic slowdown. So as a result of that, they might contra everything. So I think at the moment we're in this range and I think we might be here for some time. Hmm. So what is your sense from these current levels? Do you see prices moving out further or, as you said, 68 perhaps could be a resistance that the print prices could see? I think given positive economic news coming through, obviously we've got a lot in the States, um, you know, uh, over this week. So... So I think if we get positive economic news, we get more of an outcome on the trade talks, then I think that will push prices higher. But at the moment, I don't see prices moving too much out of that range. Uh, so uh, I guess relatively stable as she goes, which is good for all the economies. Mm. Jonathan, I get your point about uh, how the prices are expected to move quarter on quarter. There is the Iran waiver that would come into picture as we get into April. There, it's also about uh, uh, what the markets actually see in sense of data every a quarter. And then the U.S. output, which is already 12 million barrels per day plus, which is expected mm. to hit 13 by the end of this year. What are, what are the uh, you know, fundamentals that you would uh, really want to keep an eye on, which you think would, deriving, would be driving the prices? Well, I, I generally think it's quite... A, uh, when you look at it, particularly out of China, uh, you know, you look at the demand for oil out of China continues to increase. And uh, although we're seeing the economic slowdown there, we're still seeing and, and expect, uh, you know, trying to continue to consume upwards of an extra half a million barrels. So uh, I get a sense that, uh, you know, the, the change into the economics there is, is a key. Um, when you look at demand for car, it's the first time they've actually contracted in some time. But if that reverses, then I think the trend is set for demand out of China to continue. Mm. And as a result of that, I think you'll find that uh, output from the US will continue, but hopefully they'll placate each other. So uh, if anything, marginally higher, but I don't see it getting too aggressive unless we get a curveball. Mm. So, Jonathan, would you say in light of everything that we've just discussed, there is more points to that lean on the bullish side? Uh, yes, I, I do. Uh, I think at the end of the day that uh, there is a slant or I'm sort of got this slant towards the bullish side just purely because I think that we will get a, an outcome of those trade talks. They have been delayed a little bit mm. um, and I think whilst we have that delay, more positive news you know, should see demand whilst we get those deficits in from um, you know, Saudi plus with their cuts, that should actually see underpin prices towards the top side. Sure. Okay. All right, Jonathan, as well as Manisha, thanks very much for joining in and bringing us that perspective on crude prices currently around $65, $66 per barrel. Take a break. But up next, once we come back, we'll be discussing technicals. Ashwini Gujral will be with us next week.